Um, yeah, I'm Matt Baldwin from Transystems. I'm the project manager on this project. And so we'll be providing a quick overview of the project and then we're going to answer questions and walk around and kind of present the materials that we have after that. And Emily? Uh, and then Gary, we're good on recording, right? We're good on recording. Okay. You're sure it's great. Okay. So welcome everyone tonight. We have a quick presentation just to give an overview and present some of the information about the project and the history of the project. Talk about some of the alternatives that we've evaluated, talk about kind of existing conditions, proposed conditions, and then we'll go through that as part of this presentation. And uh, just to give a feel for the room, everyone please sign in just so we know you're, if you attended or if you wanna be contacted after this, that's what we're gonna use for um, that in the future. We have a corridor map. The corridor is so long, we want to make it big enough so everyone could see it. So that's actually the south portion of the corridor. So that's from Mooseheart uh, to Main Street. So that's the striping that would um, begin just north of the Mooseheart intersection and then transition at Main Street. And then the north portion of the downtown is shown right here. So that's uh, Houston to McKee and then all the way up to Fabian. And that indicates what the proposed striping is at this time. We also have a corridor map which shows um, average daily traffics, um, conditions of the corridor, and then we have a typical section of the existing and proposed. And then we have a table set up over here for comments. So uh, please leave your comments on the project after this. Um, just drop them in the box and then we record all those and respond to all of them after this as well. So, so we went through introductions, but I am serving as the project manager on this project and Emily's here as well, answering any questions on the design. So the project location. So as I just noted, the project's located from Mooseheart Road up to Fabian Parkway. The project that we're talking about tonight, we're calling the permit improvement project. Um, there's another project that we're looking at, which is a safety improvement project, which has federal funds through the ITEP program. That's evaluating all of the pedestrian crossings through the corridor and looking how to make those safer. That's a separate federally funded project. To go through that process is more cumbersome. So the city has actually chosen to lead this locally, locally fund this project so that we can expedite it. It was talked about at council a couple months ago. The idea is to go and bring this project to the street in spring of 24 next year. So this can be implemented quicker. If we we're going and using federal funds, we'd be a couple of years out. So trying to differentiate that this is the permit improvement project. There's also a safety improvement project going along this corridor as well. Uh, project overview, share a lot of this information, but we're also coordinating with IDOT since this is an IDOT route, they have jurisdiction over the road, so they have to review and approve anything that we do along this corridor. Um, the project purpose, so there's no existing turn lanes, which lead to some safety and capacity issues along the corridor. We're also looking at to improve the ability to cross Illinois Route 31. It's easier to cross a three lane intersection than it is a four lane intersection. So that's one of the, the immediate impacts or benefits that we'd see. It's also gonna reduce speed differentials. Anyone that's driven this corridor knows that people drive various speeds. That's one of the big challenges with the four lane corridor. You have someone going 35 and you might have someone 50, going 50 miles an hour next to them, which causes challenges to cross the corridor. This one's a little hard to see on, on the screen, but this is showing the existing traffic data and also the future traffic data. So there's about 13 to 14,000 cars on a daily basis through the corridor. It's actually in the handout too, that if you picked it up over there, it shows this map as well. And um, that's within the limits to uh, implement a road diet. And so that's part of why we're showing this. There's, there's two additional conditions that we're showing here. There's the 2050, so year 2050, no build. That's what we're designed to is, is year 2050. And that means this stays four lanes. So when you're looking at the no build condition, that stays exactly the way it is right now. The 2050 build condition is, is change, modifying it to a three lane section. And that's the, the average daily traffic that would be expected at that time. It actually goes down. What we see with road diet projects is a lot of people start to use alternative routes. They might filter to other major arterials and this would operate potentially at a lower uh, traffic volume. These ADTs, these average daily trips, our, our traffic is, is um, coordinated with CMAP. And so that's the local planning manager and they come up, they use their model and um, put the alternatives that we're considering into there with the uh, local regional planning that they have in their model and come up with these volumes. This is a summary or an overview of the crash history along the corridor. 
So we evaluated the five-year traffic from 2016 to 2022 as part of the feasibility study. That was the most recent five years of traffic available at that time. And this documents what the total uh, crashes were through the corridor of the um, and where they occurred. There was 108 total crashes during that period. And two thirds of them were either rear end or turning crashes, which are the two primary um, crash types that road diet will improve. So why a lane reallocation? Why is the city considering this? And we're also gonna call it a road diet. So a road diet involves converting an existing four lane undivided highway like Illinois 31 is to a three lane segment consisting of two through lanes and a center median. And that center median um, allows for the roadway cross section to be reallocated um, as, as shoulders or other uses. And so in this instance, you'll look at the typical sections on the side after the presentation, and you can see it's a really narrow uh, corridor as, it, as is. Everyone knows it's, it's nine to nine and a half foot lanes through most of the corridor, which is substandard. We're proposing evaluating 11 foot lanes with a 10 foot bi-directional turn lane and then two to three foot shoulders, which one of the, the um, uh, constraints that IDOT shared with us early in the project is that they didn't want us to taper in or move in any of the curb lines. So we're working within the existing footprint. So when you're looking at this stuff, we're pretty much using the existing road that we have and then trying to repurpose that, that typical section the best that we can. And so that's one of the things we're looking for comments on tonight as well. This is the typical section which we, with we, which we just discussed. Um, the two center lanes are closer to nine feet, and then the outside lanes vary from nine and a half to 10 feet, depending on where you're at in the corridor. As we note here, we're proposing uh, one 11 foot lane in each direction with a 10 foot bi-directional turn lane. This is currently being reviewed by IDOT as well, and then we're presenting it tonight for any comment as well. Proposed improvements. This is a, a segment at um, the transition between Elm Street and Main Street. It's reflected on the corridor exhibit on the south side there. Just to kind of give a flavor of what's gonna be happening along the corridor, we are um, proposing dedicated left turn lanes at the primary side streets to get those higher turn volume locations out of the, the through lane. And then we have a lot several segments that have the two-way left turn lane, also known as a twiddle. Um, which you'll see here between Union and Elm Street. And then we have the transition from three lanes to four lanes back. Well, it's five lanes at Main Street. And so you can see what those, those lane drops and lane ads look like. We also completed a capacity analysis as part of the feasibility study that we completed for the city. It evaluates the operations at the side streets and throughout the corridor just to see what the operations will look like how they operate in the existing condition and also how they would operate in the 2050 build condition to make sure that um, we have an understanding of what those delays would be on the side street. And so this is kind of a small, it's a small graphic and it's tough to see and we can talk about it with, with you all afterwards, but um, it indicates what the expectations would be with the traffic um, down, the, down the immediately in 2021 after it's improved, but also in 2050. Now, part of this that, that's an important consideration is that the 2050 condition that we used and proposed so that we didn't understate the traffic when we were coordinating with IDOT, we used the no build scenario. So that's the higher traffic volume. So because we're using a higher traffic volume and we have three lanes instead of four lanes, you'll see that some of those uh, delays increase slightly. And project schedule, just to give you a sense of where we're at right now, the feasibility study was completed which evaluated safety and operations and it indicated to IDOT and through that coordination that they were comfortable with implementing a road diet for the segments that don't include the downtown. They wanted further study to support um, that the operations would be adequate through the downtown section. So that's still being evaluated as part of that safety project. Um, but they have, have indicated that they think that a road diet is feasible through the segments that we have indicated as red on the map, for example. And so we're in the permit plan phase right now, and we've developed a preliminary striping plan, which is presented tonight. We're conducting this public information meeting, which was requested by IDOT. They didn't want any of this striping to occur along the corridor and approve it without receiving comment first. So this is our comment period. Um, and then we're gonna incorpor incorporate IDOT and public comments into the final plan, which we would then submit that final plan to IDOT for approval and then get a highway permit. 
And as discussed at council a couple months ago, the goal is to implement this improvement in spring of 2024. And as I note on this slide, the phase one engineering study for the ITEP funded safety improvements within the downtown segment and at the pedestrian cro crossings is ongoing. There will be a separate public information meeting for that project to receive comment and get feedback um, on those crossings and those proposed improvements. Uh, this is information um, on the comment period. We're providing two weeks for comments. All comments can be uh, either submitted today or sent to the city. Um, to the city engineer and we're hot. And then all these documents will be posted um, online after this meeting for you to view afterwards. There's a um, project page dedicated on the city's website. And so with that, we're, I'm hoping that that answered a decent amount number of questions that, that you have tonight.